Hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to move on to our next two lessons actually. So we're going to cover um, Unit 4, Lessons 2 and 3, that's Exploring Angles and Measuring Angles. We're going to do them both at the same time because uh, the textbook tries to break it down uh, a little bit simplistic for you and I would like to get you right on to using a, uh, a real protractor because that's what we're going to need to know how to use. So a lot of exploring angles has you using your own uh, protractor that you create out of paper and you do some folding. I'll, I'll show you an example. So it, it has you make your own eight part protractor and it kind of looks something like this. You've kind of done some folding and cutting. Um, it's not very accurate and I don't feel that it's getting you where you need to be as far as learning how to measure using a protractor. So I'm going to combine the two lessons. I'm going to try to teach you a little bit about a protractor, what it is, how to use it, and, uh, and we'll get into measuring some angles. So, once again, lesson two and three, <clears throat> we're on page 130 to 138 of the textbook. And the EPs that you'll do are on uh, EP2 and EP3. Now you're just going to do questions one and two on EP2. That is, you're not going to do number three. Because that's the one where you got to use your, your special protractor. But uh, for questions one and two, I'd like you to use a real protractor. So a real one that will look like this. And you'll use that real protractor and you'll do a couple of those uh, measuring your desk or maybe the chair you're sitting in. Um, and it says go to the classroom and find a larger angle, but maybe you'll just go into your room or kitchen or something and do that. So questions one and two in EP2. And on EP3, I would like you to do all of it. It's three questions. And uh, again, you're using a ruler and a protractor. So you're going to need to have a protractor for this. Um, search around the house, see what you can find. Uh, without a protractor, you can't really do this particular lesson. But what you could do is you can head online to Mathletics. And if you sign in using your code to Mathletics and you do the, uh, the angles um, lesson, it'll, it'll be able to show you a protractor. You'll kind of be able to use one on the computer. So it would help you there. Anyway, the idea of this lesson is for us to understand how to read this thing and to read angles. So, starting off, a protractor. You're going to hear the word protractor. It basically looks like a, a semicircle or a half of a sun. And it is labeled uh, all the way from zero all the way around to 180 degrees. So I've got my big chalkboard one here. Um, I've got different examples. So this is a little bit larger one, it's kind of that half semicircle. On the bottom of this one, it has a ruler. Okay, so you can measure in inches, centimeters, and then it also has all these degrees. Okay, you've got um, a smaller one that you'll find in most geometry sets. And then you've got one that we use here in the shop. We do a lot of uh, drafting with this guy. So this is a full circle, and it'll measure angles in 360 degrees. Okay, so pretty neat in, in that way, and we use this a little bit in the shop when we get there with our drafting. But for now, for today, I'm going to focus on, uh, on these two. Okay, and I'll use mine most, but yours will look very similar. Okay, it's usually clear. You can see through it so that when you put it on a piece of paper, the lines will go right through now, one thing that you'll notice with, uh, with some of the questions that you do, you might have just a small little angle like this. And when you set your protractor on it to try to measure it, it doesn't actually get up through the line here. So what you might have to do is extend your lines with a ruler. And that way, when you place your protractor on here, the line actually cuts through up here where you can read it. So just pay attention to that. If all of a sudden you see that you can't read it, it's not going through your protractor, extend your lines. Just use a ruler to make sure it's still accurate. So, a protractor, what does it do? This measures angles. And we know that an angle is where two lines intersect, okay, and they meet at a vertex. Okay, the point where they meet is the vertex. So that's the angle itself. This point here is the vertex, and these are arms. Okay, so that makes an angle of some kind. Well, we want to know how many degrees that angle is. How big is the angle? What size is the angle? Okay, 
Uh, now usually you're going to see a protractor go from 180, 0 to 180, 0 to 180 degrees. And it'll go up by one degree. So each one of these little spaces between the lines is a one degree increment. That means there's 180 of them right here. And it'll be the same on yours. There'll be 180 spaces between the lines. And you count the space, not necessarily the line. If you put your pencil on the first line, that's like zero. And go to the next line, that's one, two, three, four. Okay, so you count spaces, not lines. Okay, so that's what an angle is. Now you'll see these little circles that I draw by the numbers here. Okay, that is representing a degree. So anytime you see a number, 22 degrees, that would be referring to an angle. Now sometimes you might say, well, isn't that a temperature? Usually you would see a letter like C or F for Celsius or Fahrenheit behind that. And you'd say that's 22 degrees Celsius. So that would be a temperature. Whereas when I get rid of that C, now I'm talking about an angle. Sometimes you'll see a little L looking thing like that in front and that would represent an angle. So what we're doing here, we're obviously talking about angles. Okay, so let's learn how to use this guy. So first of all, what you're going to need is you're going to need a couple of angles. Now, since I'm asking you to draw with a ruler, I'm also going to try to draw with a ruler. Just for the first couple. After that, I'll probably just do freehand. So what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line, nice and straight, and a second line that intersects there. Okay, so there's our angle, and we're going to ask ourselves, how big is this angle? Okay, so people that might use this are, uh, you know, pilots, somebody that's uh, trying to hit a target of some kind. Uh, maybe builders when they're building certain things or uh, large skyscrapers, etc. So architects, they need to know their angles. They need to know sizes of angles and they need to know direction sometimes. So in order to kind of get the basics, we've got to learn how to use this protractor. First thing is you're going to have this little line here. On some of them it's a dot, sometimes it's a line, sometimes there's an opening. So there's a little circle and there's actually a hole in here. And I would want my intersection to be right in the middle of that zero. Okay, so my vertex right here, I want that lined up with this line. And then I'm going to pick this line here to go and be right at the very bottom of my protractor. So I'm going to go and set it here and here. So that line's really quite straight on there. It's going right through the zero, or in this case 180. And the point is right at that intersection. And so I could count each one of these if I wanted to, but I can just read. There's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. And then I go 1, 2, 3, 4. 124 degrees. Well, now you look at this and you see that right here where it says 120, it also says 60. 110, 70, 180, 30, 150. What does that mean? Well, that's why we learned acute and obtuse angles just this last lesson. And we can see that this angle is larger than 90 degrees, right? This would be about 90 degrees. This is larger than that, so we know it's obtuse. As soon as we know it's an obtuse angle, we know it's going to be bigger than 90. So when I put this on here, again, I could say, okay, so, well, there's the 60, there's the 50, that must mean it's 56. Well, no, 56 would tell me that it's an acute angle, but I can see this is bigger. So I can also see that from the 50 and the 60 here below is just a 120 and a 130. Oh, that makes more sense. That tells me that it's bigger than 90, and it's 124. If I count the little spaces between the 120 and the middle, which would be 125, it doesn't have to label it for me to be able to tell, each space is 1. So 124. Okay, well let's do a smaller one. Okay, 
Okay, so there's an acute angle, right? I know that this answer will be less than 90. And I'm measuring this part of the angle. Once again, I'm going to put my line right on the point, And I'm going to line up the bottom of my protractor with my line. Okay, that's pretty close. And now I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to say, okay, I'm between the 40 and the 50. Probably just one tick above. 41. It also has between 130 and 140, actually about 139. And I have to ask myself, well, is this 139 degrees? Or is this 41 degrees? Well, it's definitely less than 90, because 90 would be right about here. And 139 tells me it would be an obtuse angle. It would look something like this. Okay, I can tell that it's smaller. Okay, so that was one reason why we learned the difference between obtuse and acute. So that we understand that a smaller angle measures less than 90, an acute angle. And a larger angle, bigger than that right 90 degree angle, is going to measure larger than that. And that helps us read the protractor. These protractors will do the same thing. You can see 50, 130, 60, 120, 70, 110. And the same thing on this side. So they all look very similar. You have to know which one am I reading. Am I reading the big numbers or am I reading the small numbers? Small numbers for acute, big numbers for obtuse. Okay, so that's how you measure angles. Now, what else did they want us to know? There wasn't a lot. We kind of got right into measuring of angles. So, what I'm going to ask you to do, if you've got your textbook close or you can see it, you go to page 132. Okay, 132. And up here in question number two, it's got some angles. So it says, use your protractor to measure each angle below and record the measurements. So I would grab my uh, smaller, either uh, this protractor or this protractor. And I would just set this right on the book, and I would measure them. Okay, now, the you know, tricky thing is, when I put it on here, I can't actually... It doesn't actually get all the way up to where I need it to get to. These angles are too small. So, I don't want you to write in the textbook, but what you are going to do, is you're going to take your exploring angles page, okay, this is that unit 4, lesson 2, and you're going to extend some of these lines down here, okay? So if you put your protractor on these lines, okay, so you could put it like this or like this, it shouldn't matter. Let me show you that on the board. So I got 41 degrees for this one by going like this. Well, what if I turned it upside down? And I went here, okay, so I got my zero here, my, my line is right on where they intersect, and I go around to here, and I'm still at 41, 10, 20, 30, 41, okay, same thing with this one, I don't have to hold it like this, I can hold it like this, as long as this is right in this intersection point, and my bottom line, or my zero, is in line with this. Okay, so it would look like that. I'd go 90, 100, 110, 120, 1, 2, 3, 4, 124. So again, it doesn't matter if you hold your protractor like this or like this. The key thing is that this um, zero, this point, this line, the middle of your protractor is right on that vertex, okay? If you need to make that dot a little bigger or, you know, define it a little better on your piece of paper so that you get that exactly there, perfect. And if you need to extend these lines because they don't get out to where they need to to give you a nice easy look, then you just extend those lines with a ruler and a pencil. Make sure this line and this line or this line and this line are lined up. Center's on there and you'll get a good accurate number every single time. 
So once again, on this exploring angle sheet, what I would say is you need to take a pencil and extend these lines. Extend these lines. This is just a practice sheet to kind of get you learning some of this information so it's not uh, a big deal if you've got some writing on it and, and kind of looks a little bit messy basically. So what I'm going to do real quick here is I'm going to grab a pencil. I'm going to extend those lines on there and then I'm going to measure it and we're going to see if we get the same answer. So I hope you are doing the same thing right now. I'm going to extend these lines and uh, do your best to keep them on the same angle that they started on. That's going to give you the most accurate answer. Okay, so you can see I just extended this guy out and now when I place my protractor on here I get that zero. Looks like I get exactly 40 degrees. 4-0 or I guess I could have said 140 but I know that's not 140 degrees because 140 degrees would be a big angle. Kind of look a little bit like this. This one here looks a little closer to this. 41, this one's 40. Okay, so that number 1A on your exploring angle sheet is 40 degrees measured by my protractor. If I looked at B and C, well C looks a lot like a right angle so I would want to extend those and measure but I'm pretty sure that's a right angle. B looks a little less so I would say that 1 A and B are acute and you're going to want to give me the number for those. Number two it asks you to use a protractor to measure each of the marked angles. Once again if your protractor does not give you an accurate reading because the lines aren't long enough well you look at the one that they want you to measure they want you to measure this one you got to extend these two arms. Remember? The arms that are on the angle. So you just take your ruler, extend those straight down, and once you've extended those straight down, okay, so I've made them a little bit bigger, just extended them. Doesn't matter what the triangle looks like anymore, if my page is a little messy, it's not about that, it's about understanding how to read this. Okay, I've got my zero, on the intersection and I've got this line cutting through zero degrees. This one looks like it goes through 70 degrees. It's going through the 70 and the 110 exactly. So that's 2A I would say is 70 degrees. Okay, I want you to complete each of these but it talks about using an 8 unit protractor. Don't use an 8 unit protractor. That's the paper one that they wanted you to create I don't think that's very useful for us to do. I think it's much more useful for us to get used to using a real protractor. So I want you to go through and measure those. Try to come up with an accurate answer. In most cases you're going to have to extend those lines with a pencil. Um, now it says use a ruler, estimate to draw each angle. Okay, don't do question number three. You want to do question one, question two, and that's all you're going to do on this. So you'll do the one and two on the first side, and you'll do one and two on the back side. Okay? Let me just quickly write that down for you. So this is the uh, exploring angles. Uh, that's the worksheet, okay? Just do number one and two on the front and number one and two on the back, okay? Because then what you're going to do is you're actually going to give that EP a try and that's also just questions one and two. So it's a whole bunch of one, two, one, two, one, two, okay? That's the EP. Now, lesson three is exactly what we just learned here. We're going to do more of real protractor measuring. And uh, you'll see there's a protractor on the top of your page. It again talks about acute, right, obtuse, straight, and reflex angles, something that we've already learned. Use a protractor to measure the angle. Once again, if this isn't a big enough line, extend it with a pencil and a ruler. Okay, and on the back, you're going to do some more measuring estimate the size, so estimate then measure. This will be good practice for you to see how good you are. And uh, name each uh, angle in question number two. 
So are they acute, right, obtuse, or reflex? Um, so that's the work you're going to do, all based on understanding how to read this protractor. Okay? And once you've done those questions um, on the worksheet that I've given you, you can do the EP 1 to 3 again. So 1 to 3, all those questions. Um, what I'll do now is I'll go through the textbook on uh, page 130. Let's see, we're going to go one, 136. Let's do some questions on 136, 137, and 138. And that will help lead you through both of these assignments. So let me just erase my board here, and I'll, and I'll get through a couple of those questions for you to help give you some more examples, some more work um, using a protractor. So, page 136, question number one. It says, what is the measure of each angle and explain how you know. So, it gives you a protractor, and then you can see the red lines are the angle on there. So as soon as I look at 1A, I think acute. I can see it's smaller than 90. So I look there, and it looks like it's exactly halfway between the 30 and the 40. So I could just say, well, that's 35. I could try to count each little tick, but I can see it's exactly in the middle of between 30 and 40. It's also in the middle between 140 and 150. But we know it's acute, therefore it has to be the smaller numbers. B. We can see it's going straight through 90 and straight through 0. Or it's in, and the other side is 180, but it's, that means it's the 0. Okay? And 90 and 0 means a right angle. And then C, I can see it's a bigger angle. It's opened up bigger. Therefore, it's going to be obtuse. So I can look, and I'm going to look at the bigger numbers. So it's on the 40 and on the 140. Do I think that's a 40 degree angle or a 140 degree angle? Yeah, you're right. 140 degrees. Okay, now for number two it says choose each, sorry, for each angle, choose an appropriate reference angle. Is it closest to 45, 90, 180? And so as you look, you can do some referencing. I would say that 45 degrees probably looks like A, uh, D is a little bit less than 45, B is a little bit more than 45, B is close to 90, E is close to 90, those are referencing, okay, so you're, you're referencing those big numbers, those uh, really commonly used numbers, especially when you get to the shop here with me and we do some construction, we use 45 degrees, 90 degrees a lot, and obviously 180 degrees is a straight line, so we like those too, uh, lots of our boards we hope are straight, and so they're 180 degrees, and we like to make cuts at 90 and 45, so those are really common numbers. That's why we use those as reference numbers when we're looking at angles. Because in the real world, those are really important angles to understand and know. Now I want to use a protractor to measure and name them. Okay, well let me do a couple of them for you here. Um, I'm going to do A, C, and E. So A, when I line up my protractor, I get that on the zero, I get that on the vertex, 35 degrees. 35 degrees is acute. You're right. C, I'm going to line that up, zero it up, 65, oh, but it looks bigger, that's the obtuse one, so it's 115, C is 115, and it's obtuse, I can see it's bigger than 90, and then E, looks like it is, uh, might be a little bit different of an angle, I'm going to say it's, uh, I can see it's going between 100 and 110. It looks bigger than 90, so I know it's obtuse. And I'm going to say that is 107. 107. Okay. Moving on to question three. Which of these angles do you think measures 45 degrees exactly? Again, you'll see that 45 degree number, 90 degree number, 180 come up a lot. So when I look at this, I would say that A and F look pretty close. Maybe even B. Now I take this. And I, and I see if I'm right. Oh man, I, it's hard for me to measure because these lines are a little bit small. So I could either extend them with a ruler and a pencil and then erase them real good after. Or I could trace them onto a piece of paper. So I could put a blank piece of paper over top, trace that, extend them, measure them, and then I get the answer. 
Um, let's see. I'm going to say, yeah, that A looks real close to 45. No, B looks a little bit too big, maybe. B is a little bit too big. F, oh, F is also too big. What about E? E looks pretty close. And if I measure E, ooh, really close. I'd have to extend it to no, but it looked really close to 45 degrees. Uh, four just wants you to measure the angles. Okay, a lot of these are just measuring angles. So you grab your protractor and start measuring. Uh, when you turn the page to 138, it's got the letters, some letters in the alphabet, A, E, K, X, M, T, and it wants you to measure some of the angles. So it says, I have four equal angles. Each angle measures 90 degrees. Which letter am I? Four equal angles. Each measures 90 degrees. Oh, that looks like the X. See the letter X on there? So if that's 90, that must be a 90, that must be a 90, that must be a 90. There's four angles, the exact same, measuring 90 degrees. Oh, I bet you 7A is the letter X. Uh, the next question, I do not have any angles that measure 90. I have three angles that measure 60, two angles that measure 120. Which letter am I? Mm, very good question. So, three that measure 60. Okay, and two that measure 120. So you're looking for a letter that has three angles that look smaller than 90, they look the same, and two angles that are bigger than a right angle, and they look the same. So letter E, no, those look like 90 degree angles. Letter K, they look all different. M, M could be, it's got one, two, three, I only really see three three angles, and the letter T, I see 290, so I think the letter A, if you look at the A, this, this, and this are those 60 degree angles that they're talking about, and then this and this are the 120 degree angles that they're talking about, I think. Okay, I want you to give a try to C and D to see what you can get. So. That is um, Unit 4, Lessons 2 and 3, kind of exploring and measuring angles. I would challenge you to get out into your house and measure different angles, okay? Whether it's roof, walls where they come together, or maybe some floor tiles, or some different tables and desks and chairs and cupboards. Just find some different angles around the house. See if you can measure them, okay? So again, the one thing that I do want handed in here are these two EPs, uh, two and three. EP three, to finish us off here, it asks you to use a ruler and to draw some lines to make acute, obtuse, straight, and right angles. Okay, so that was for question one. For question two, it's wanting you to measure some of these angles in the letters N, Z, F, and W. So use your um, protractor. Extend some lines if you have to. And then you're going to do some referencing and measuring and labeling of the angles in question three. Obtuse, acute, right, reflex, all that kind of stuff. Okay? So, any more questions on this? You feel free to give me a, a show on uh, Google Classroom or have your parents email me. But, these two lessons, uh, I've kind of combined them because they're very similar. And we're just getting used to learning how to use a protractor, okay? Protractor. Okay, have fun with that one.